Good morning. Thank you for your uh, divided attention. I'm Pastor Bob Weiss. Uh, Pastor Miller asked me to come here and step in while he's on vacation. So it's nice to be back here again uh, after being away here for some time. Uh, But before we begin uh, with the opening hymn, I'd like to ask Ruth to come. She has something to say about the youth meeting. Good morning. I just wanted to invite all of you who are junior high, high school age to youth group. Uh, This week, we are meeting at our usual time, Tuesday, 6.30 to 8. But starting in August, so August 2nd, we're going to be moving to Wednesday night. So for those of you who have been coming, put that on your calendars. For those of you who haven't been coming, hopefully Wednesday will work a little bit better. So starting in August, Wednesdays from 6.30 to 8 o'clock, meet us downstairs. We'll have food, we'll have fellowship, we'll be in God's Word, and we would love to see you there. And I just wanted to let the whole congregation know that those of us who went on the mission trip, we're going to be telling you about that during Bible class on August 6th. So if you could join us for Bible class on August 6th, we'll tell you all about our mission trip to Minnesota. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, let's begin and open up with the first hymn that you have in your printed bulletin. Oh uh-huh. 
as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled by God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. The Lord is my portion, I promise to keep your words. When I think on my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. Though the cords of the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your law. I am a companion of all who fear you, of those who keep your precepts. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Your grief. 
Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is taken from the 44th chapter, the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me, since I appointed an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. I have not told you from of old and declared it, and you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome, the eighth chapter. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption of sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved. Nor, not now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the next hymn. Your dross to consume 
Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in the field. While the men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore again, then the weeds appeared also, and the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No. Lest in gathering the weeds, you root up the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first, bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is close of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The son of man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom, all the causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The final word. I suspect that um, in your families, uh, whether you go on vacation, uh, perhaps even the younger ones who are here want to go outside and play, uh, or maybe the teenagers, uh, whether most of them have cars these days, Uh, Maybe they want to borrow mom and dad's car for some special occasion, and then they go on a date, 
Uh, Whatever the circumstance might be, I suspect there is someone in your family that has the final say, the final word. And sometimes when the final word comes down, well, sometimes we don't like it. Sometimes it's a bit rough and it gets a bit raw. And I realize this kind of all depends on the context, the situation, and what we're doing. Sometimes, believe it or not, Even the animals you have might even have the final word in terms of what's going to happen and how things are going to go. Well, the final word really is important here in the parable of the weeds. Uh, This is kind of very important because it addresses the final word of the reign of heaven. I realize the translation here was, as it says here, the kingdom of heaven. But this is about the reign of heaven. And Jesus is the reign of heaven. And it regards about all those who live in sin, all those who live according to the will and according to the words of Christ. And we all live in this broken world. We know the world is broken. It's been broken ever since Adam and Eve, as I've said before, took that first lunch break and fell into sin. It's always been broken. And it remains so. And some of us even like to think, it's even worse today than it was thousands of years ago. All you have to do is kind of read the Bible and find out, really, things haven't changed very much. Sin is sin and grace is grace. But this parable, it really gets to the final word of judgment, and that is really, I think, for a lot of people, causes some heartburn. Where am I in this judgment? Well, you're baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and heaven is your home. Well, this parable is really split into two audiences. The very first audience, Jesus is speaking to a whole bunch of crowds, and the book of Matthew really is addressed to a Jewish audience. And the crowd is primarily Jewish. The reign of heaven may be compared to a man who goes out and he plants all kinds of good wheat, all kinds of good seed. And then he and his curmudgeons decide kind of to take a nap. Well, who wouldn't after you've planted all of that stuff? And here comes the enemy. He comes along and doop, 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 weeds get planted and they wake up. And the farmhands say to the man who planted the weeds, didn't, I thought you planted good seed here. We got all of these weeds. What should we do? I guess what we should do is go ahead and pull out all the weeds so that the good seed, the wheat, can grow. He said, no, 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 no. Let them grow together, because there will come a time when, in fact, we will gather the weeds, and we will gather the wheat, and we'll gather the weeds, and we'll put them in bundles, and we'll throw them in a fire, and the wheat we will gather and put them in the barn. And the crowds are kind of like, what's, what's going on here? So he even goes on farther, and there's two parables in between the, how he explains the parable of the weeds. He talks about the mustard seed and the parable of the leaven. Try and just to explain to them that the reign of the kingdom of God is here. You can't change it. It is what it is. I am the son of God. I came to seek and to save the lost. And it is what it is. You're not going to change it. So leave the weeds and the wheat grow together. Now, if you get a sense of this, this is kind of like the broad spectrum of the church at large, where you have believers and you have unbelievers. And so he goes on and he says, you know, look, so you can't stop, you can't stop this. Stop looking for something that you can't find. It's not there. I am telling you about salvation by grace through faith. And to get this point across, Jesus tells, like I said, two more parables. Well, the crowds, they leave baffled. They, they just don't get these parables. They're kind of like, duh, what's this guy talking about? And Jesus, as you well know, the carpenter, he used a lot of farm language. Pretty easy to get. And those of you who are farmers understand that. And the rest of these, this Jewish audience are kind of like, we just don't get it. And even the disciples themselves 
are having struggles over their faith. Would that they would have faith like the size of a grain of a mustard seed, which grows into a huge, huge bush. And so the crowds leave. Jesus enters the house with the disciples, and they say, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Okay, this is not complicated, he says. This is the Kodak moment you've missed. The Son of Man, that's me. I'm the one that sowed the good, I call it the gospel seed, the wheat. And the field that was all laid in, that's that broken field. It's there. We live in this topsy-turvy world, gang. And the good seed, well, those are the sons of the rain, the rain of heaven. That's you. That's me. We're out there. Well, here comes the weeds. Well, I hate to say it, but the weeds are kind of like the unbelievers, you know? They don't trust God. They want to find their own dog and pony show. Self is God. And so, well, those are the sons of the evil one. It's the same Greek word used at the end of the Lord's Prayer. The evil one. And the evil one is the devil. And they he comes along and he plants these weeds, these temptations to drive us away from worshiping God in spirit and in truth. The harvesters, they will collect the good seed and the evil weeds, but the harvesters are the Lord's angels, his messengers, and they will come. And the weeds will be collected, wrapped up, burned, with fire at the end of the age, and hell, prison, will be their home. You and I, believers in Christ, the righteous ones, will shine forth like the sun shines forth, living for an eternity with our Lord in heaven. That's a wow moment, isn't it? That's a wow moment. And so the disciples, though, they're still kind of Hmm, I think we're getting this, but we're not quite there. They're still struggling in understanding Jesus' ministry of salvation. And there's all kinds of stories about that. We know, of course, when Jesus talks about, on three occasions, his suffering, his death, and uh, his resurrection, and Peter's, ah, Peter said, ah, it's not going to happen. No, no, no. They just aren't quite getting it. Like a lot of people today in the world, a lot of people today, they just don't quite get it. They just don't get it at all. Because they don't care. And so the disciples are with Jesus, but it's getting harder and harder for them to kind of wrap around what's going on in this broken world of autocratic self is God. But two points have to really be made here. When you take a look at this parable, this analogy, and that's what parables are, that Jesus is, talks about relating his reign and the end times, especially the landowner, Jesus, where he says, don't try and separate the unbelievers for the believers. For across the horizon, the landscape, there are believers, unbelievers, and we're all mixed together in a community, aren't we? We are all there. And you probably, like I, know people in maybe your subdivisions or wherever you might live, maybe downtown, and you see people, and you kind of wonder, I wonder if they went to church. I wonder if they believe in Jesus. And maybe we just walk by and say nothing. Because we are in this mixture. And Jesus says, don't do anything. It is what it is. My reign is what it is. Leave the situation alone until harvest until harvest, and then some else, someone else, will take care of it. Let's face it, maybe some of those weeds, maybe some of those weeds might be just converted by the power of the gospel. And you know people who did not believe that are living amongst all of us too, that now believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Secondly, this field, it is the broken world that we live in. And I'm not sure, I don't know, maybe I'm grinding my axe, and I've been told when I was at the seminary years ago, 
and teaching there, you know, never grind your axe in the pulpit. Well, I left it at home. But we do live in a broken world of sin, death, and the power of the devil. He's roaming about seeking whom he may devour. You heard that before, I'm sure, from Pastor Miller. For this is a common community that we live in. Look around you. Weeds are everywhere. Now, does that mean that we're trying to elevate ourselves as better? No, we're trying to find out who are these weeds. Maybe we can share the word of God with them. Maybe the Spirit of the Lord is going to turn their heart from mush into the solid gospel of Christ. Because that's the power of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe. But Satan and his demons, they're sinister. They put all these potholes in front of us. We walk by faith, and he says, nah, God didn't really tell you all. You know, you can just kind of take it easy. You can tolerate all of the stuff that goes on regarding human sexuality, where male and female don't mean anything anymore. You don't have to worry about that. That's kind of the way the culture is today. you got to get with the culture. I mean, let's face it. What does it mean to be a human in Christ? Right now to the world, it means nothing. It means nothing. Because it's okay when a man, man marries together, a woman, woman marries together. Trans women participate in sports. Trans men and people say, hey, Come on, Bob. And I've heard this. This is kind of the way it is. You read about it. What can you say? Times are changing. The Bible is old. So are you. <laughs> well, I know that. But God says, no. I am still here. This is my reign. Because even though you say, well, the government is allowing all of these things to occur by some people's way, God is still God. Even though Satan says, yeah, I know a lot of your gadgets become your gods, but that's okay. You can sit around all day in social media, your iPhones, your earphones, your nose phones, whatever kind of phone you got. Maybe it's a tablet. Maybe it's a Chromebook and spend hours on that, and never, never think about God in Christ Jesus who brought you from death to life. Living amongst the weeds in this world community, it does offer us an opportunity, an opportunity, the same opportunity he was telling his disciples to listen, to learn, to speak, the Jesus that you know, the Jesus that you love, the Jesus that takes away your sins and took on God's wrath at the cross so that we are enabled to speak his truth with kindness, resolve, and forbearance with those whom we don't really agree with in terms of what God in Christ has to say for us. But Satan is always tempting us to stumble and to fall, yet we, we in Christ, are more than conquerors. Indeed, all families have one or maybe more or two or three people that can say they want to have the final word. You know, sometimes this has always been one of my maladies when you teach for a long time like I did, and your pastor, and whatever, a Christian. You want to have the final, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to teach these people, you know, that, that think it's okay to dress as a man or a woman. Of course, Deuteronomy 22.5 says that's an abomination, that a man should not put on women's clothes, and a woman should not put on men's clothes. It's an abomination. I'm going to straighten them out. And God comes along and says, hey, listen, you know what? A person who listens is always a good teacher. So in this parable of the weeds, we learn that there is nothing we can do to change the direction 
of the reign of heaven in Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven, it is here now. And so we live in a community of believers and unbelievers, sometimes not knowing who a believer is and sometimes not knowing who an unbeliever is. Yet we live according to his word. We witness according to his word. And we lead other people to his word by the power of his spirit. Jesus will make all things right for those who haven't hid the gospel under a bushel basket. The unrighteous will be gathered and cast into everlasting darkness. The righteous, you and I and all these little ones here in Christ, well, will shine like the sun shines in the kingdom of our Father. He who has ears, let him hear. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we'll receive the offering to our Lord.
Please rise for prayer. Redeemer and Lord of hosts, the future is in your hands. Remove all fear from us and keep us mindful that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of heaven and earth, you have given us the story of the parable of the weeds. We know, Lord, that it's tough to hear the final judgment that comes, but we know that in Christ, heaven is our home. We pray, Lord, that you would open the door for those people who we meet on the street, at home, wherever it might be, that do not believe that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Give us the power of the gospel to shed light upon what you do for us through your death, your resurrection, the forgiveness of sins, and salvation. Heavenly Father, pour out your blessings of your Holy Spirit on the delegates who will assemble at the convention this week. Give wisdom to those who propose, deliberate, and decide for the work and welfare of our synod. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks for all who serve as instruments of your compassion, those who care for the elderly at home, those who work in retirement and nursing facilities. Grant that we also may serve as your hands, feet, and voices to give comfort and company to the lonely. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you are slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Be patient with those who do not repent or believe. Send your Holy Spirit to bring them to saving faith. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the leaders of all nations that they would work for peace and justice in the face of conflict and discord. By or despite their efforts, protect the weak and defenseless. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to you all who endure the bondage of decay through infirmity, weakness, maybe treatment for chemotherapy, whatever the illness might be. We pray, Lord, you would deliver all according to your will, strengthen and preserve their faith, that they may rejoice that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve us in hope for what we do not see. Grant that we would receive your holy supper this soothing medicine for body and soul, with hearts free from pride, presumption, or any other sin that would profane his precious body and blood. May we rejoice in his bodily presence for our forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask that you would bless us. You have called us according to your purpose. You cause all things to work together for good. Keep us safe until that day when you gather us with your saints into your kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us profess together our Holy Spirit-given faith as we speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the God. <clears throat> he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, out of love of his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon the cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink this in remembrance of me.
Please rise. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.